Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about getters and setters in Java. Now, getters and setters are certain methods that we can put inside of our classes, which allow us to control how other programs access and interact with those classes. So this is kind of an interesting idea. We can basically use getters and setters to act as a middleman. So let's say somebody creates an object from a class we created and they want to like set a specific value in that object or they want to get a specific value from that object, we can use getters and setters to essentially just act as a middleman. So I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about getters and setters and we'll really just talk about like why they're useful. So over here in my program, I've created this class and it's a movie class. So basically what this does is it, it acts as like a movie data type for our program. So this is like uh, representing a movie inside of our program. And this class has three attributes. It has a title, it has a director, and it has a rating. So we're basically defining a movie in terms of you know the title, the director, and the rating, right? This is our class, the template for a movie. And then down here, I just have this constructor, which basically um, creates the movie class. And I wanna show you guys how we could normally just communicate with this class. So over here on my app.java file, in my main method, I've actually created two movies. So I made a movie called movie one, and it's just the Avengers, and the director is Joss Whedon, and the rating is PG-13. I also created another movie called movie two, and it's Step Brothers, the director is Adam McKay, and it's rated R. So I have two movies now, and I'm able to represent the information about those movies using these objects, right? So I have two movie objects. And this is pretty cool, right? Everything's going well. And I wanna show you guys how I could interact with these. So I could say like system.out.println, and we could actually access specific information about these movies. So I could say like movie1.title, right? And this will print out the title of the first movie. So it's The Avengers. I could do the same thing with movie two, but we could do it for like director. And we'll be able to print out the director. We could do the same for the rating as well. So this will print out the rating. So I'm able to interact with this object. I'm able to get any of the uh, attributes from the object that I want just by accessing them directly like this. I can also set the attributes. So for example, let's say I wanted to change the rating for Avengers. So let's say we didn't like that it was rated PG-13. We wanted it to be rated PG. I could come in here and say movie1.rating is equal to PG. And you'll see now when we type movie1.rating and we print it out to the screen, instead of being PG-13, I just changed it. So now it's gonna be rated PG. And you see we get that over here. What I could also do though, is I could really put anything in here I wanted. I could put, for example, something that's not a valid rating. I could just put like dog in here. Now dog isn't one of the ratings that we can give to a movie, and yet I'm still able to do it over here. And this is kind of the problem that I want to address in this video. And this is kind of a situation where we could use getters and setters to solve a problem. The rating of a movie can really only, it's only supposed to have like certain values, right? We have like a G rating, a PG rating, PG 13, R, and sometimes a movie can be like not rated, right? So these are essentially like the, you know, the general ratings for movies. Maybe there's a couple other ones I'm forgetting, but for our case, let's just say that these are all the possible ratings for a movie. Well, when I created this movie object, I was able to give it a rating that wasn't one of these. Right, I was able to, to basically say like movie.rating is equal to dog, or I, I could have put whatever I wanted in there, right? There's, no, there's nothing controlling you know, what I can put inside of the rating field. And that's kind of a problem. And a lot of times when you create a class, you're going to want to enforce certain rules. So for example, when I create this movie class, I'm gonna to wanna to say like, hey, you can only give a certain you know, number of ratings. Like these are the only valid ratings that we can give to a movie. So the question becomes, how do we do that? And we can actually do that using things called getters and setters. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can create getters and setters. Let's go over to our movie class. And inside this movie class, the main problem we're dealing with is this rating, right? 
In other words, the Java program that creates a, rating, uh, a movie object is able to set this rating to whatever they want. So if I want to control what we can put in here as a rating, I can use something called a setter. And a setter is basically a method that an outside program will use in order to modify this rating attribute. So I can basically create a setter by coming down here and I'm gonna create a new method inside of this class. So I'm just gonna say public. And generally when you're creating a setter, you wanna use this naming convention. So you wanna say set and then you wanna say the name of the attribute that you're setting. So in our case, it's gonna be rating. So I'm just gonna say set rating, and actually we're gonna to need to put void here as well. So public void set rating. Inside of this parentheses, I want to allow the user to pass in a parameter. So they're gonna pass in the rating that they wanna to give to this movie, right? So over here we can just make this a string, so it's just string rating. Now, inside of this method, what I can do is I can say this.rating, and this guy right here is referring to the rating up here. So I can say the rating attribute in this class is equal to a rating. And so essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a method that the user can use in order to give a value to this rating attribute. But here's the thing though, we still have the same problem, right? In other words, over here in this app.java file, I can still use that set rating method and I can give it whatever I want. So I could come over here and say movie one dot set rating and I could pass it dog again and it's still gonna work. So movie one dot rating is still gonna be allowed to be dog. And you'll see over here it's the same thing. So really using that setter method didn't solve the problem. But here's how we can solve the problem. Inside of this set rating method, I can actually enforce what ratings are allowed. So I can come over here and I can say, basically like if the rating isn't G, PG, PG-13, R, or NR, then essentially we have an invalid rating. So I'm gonna make like an if statement to check that. So I can basically just say if, and I'm just gonna wanna check a bunch of different conditions. So we can just say like if rating dot equals and I'm just gonna to check to see if this is equal to any of the valid ratings. So I can say if rating dot equals G, or, and now I'm just gonna check PG, so we'll say or rating dot equals PG, and this is gonna be kind of a long line of code, or rating dot equals PG 13, or rating dot equals R or rating dot equals NR. So I'm basically checking to see if the rating is equal to any of these valid ratings, right? These are all the valid ratings that we allow for. So G, PG, PG 13, R and NR. Does that make sense? So we're basically saying like, if it's equal to one of the valid ratings, then we're just gonna set it, equal, set it normally. So I can say this dot rating is equal to rating, right? So I'm giving it the rating that the user passed in. Otherwise though, we can do something else. So I can say else, and in the case that it's not equal to one of the valid ratings, why don't we just set it equal to NR? So I'll just say this dot rating is equal to not rated. So if they don't give us a valid rating, I'm just gonna say, okay, let's just say that it's not rated because they didn't put in a valid rating. So. Essentially what we're doing is we're controlling the way that you can set a rating. So we're controlling what ratings are valid to set. So now when I go over here into my app.java file, and you'll notice down here I'm saying movie1.setRating dog. When we print out movie1.rating, you'll notice that instead of printing out dog, we're gonna print out nr. And so if I didn't put a valid rating inside of here, then it didn't set that invalid rating, it just set it to NR. But if I put like a valid rating, like PG-13, now when I, run the, when I run the program, it's gonna allow it to be PG-13 because that's a valid rating. So this set rating method is essentially acting as a middleman between the person creating the object and the actual object itself. So we can control what values are set on certain attributes like rating. 
But there's actually one more problem with how we've set this up, which is I can still come in here and I can just access the rating directly. So I could come in here and I could say movie1.rating is equal to dog. And this is still gonna be able to set it because we're just setting it directly. So you'll see here, I'm able to set it equal to dog. And we need to actually do one more thing in, either, in order to fully set this up. I'm gonna come over here into this movie.java class. And right in front of this rating attribute, I wanna put a special keyword in Java, which is called private. So I'm gonna say private string rating. And when I put this private keyword in front of string rating, essentially what it means is it means that this rating attribute can only be accessed by this movie class. So if I'm writing code in a file that's outside of this movie class, in other words, if I'm writing code inside of this app.java file, I'm not gonna be able to access this rating attribute directly. So I'm, I'm, there's no situation where I'm gonna be able to modify this. So if we come back over to this app.java file, you'll see that I'm getting an error here when I try to access it. It says the field movie.rating is not visible. And that basically just means that I don't have access to it. So I can't actually give this a value directly anymore. The only way that I can change the value of rating is by using that set rating method. So I have to say set rating and I have to put the argument inside of here. So I have to say like set rating and then give it the rating. And essentially what happens now is I'm not able to give it an invalid value. So the only way I can set the rating is by using this method. And remember that method is gonna filter out any bad ratings and just set them equal to not rated. So. We've basically allowed the attribute inside of that class to only have specific values. And that's really powerful. And that's sort of one of the core tenets of creating classes is that we wanna create these getters and setters in order to control the access to the individual attributes of our classes. And so essentially what I wanna do is I want to take this set rating idea and I wanna apply it to every single attribute in my class, right? So down here I have this set rating method, but I wanna make one of these for every single attribute in the class. So I wanna make one for title and director as well. So why don't we come down here and we'll do that. We'll say public set title, and actually this needs to be void. And inside of here, we're just gonna pass in a title. And then here's the thing, for title, it can really be anything we want it to be. So I'm just gonna say, this.title is equal to title, because we don't really have to filter this one out. And the same thing with director. So I can say public void set director string director. And down here, I'm just gonna say this.director is equal to director. So I'm setting this attribute. And we can do the same thing for getting an attribute. So in addition to controlling how a user is gonna set a certain attribute in our class, we also wanna control how they're going to access a certain attribute in our class. So if you'll notice, if I come back over to my app.java file, I can't actually access this rating anymore. You see here, I'm trying to access movie1.rating and it's giving me an error. It's saying the field movie.rating is not visible. Because I made this rating attribute private, I can't access it directly anymore. I can't even like, I don't even really know that it's there in my other file. So I need to create a getter method, which is going to allow me to get this. So right here below the set method, I'm just gonna say public string get rating. And in here, I'm just going to return rating. And so now, if I wanna access the rating, all I have to do is come down here and say movie1.get rating and now i'll be able to get the rating for the movie so i want to create a setter method and a getter method for every single one of these attributes so here's the set title we'll also create a get title and i'll do the same thing for director so i'll just say all right, so now I've created a getter and a setter for all the attributes inside of my class. 
So the last step is to come up here and I want to make all of these attributes private. So I'm just going to say private string title and private string director. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm closing off access to each one of these attributes in the class. And now whenever somebody who creates a movie object wants to access or set any of these attributes, they have to go through these methods that I created. So if they want to get an attribute, they have to go through the get rating method. If they want to set an attribute, they have to go through the set attribute. And essentially what that allows you to do is just control the access. So in a lot of cases, you'll notice, for example, this set title method, it's not actually doing anything that we wouldn't have already done, right? It's not doing anything special. But the point is, if at any time I wanted to make this do something special, I could do that operation inside of here and I wouldn't have to change any other code. But I want to show you guys how we can also use these inside of our constructors. So down here I have this movie constructor and it just has a few attributes like title, director, and rating. And you'll notice down here I'm only setting them equal to whatever the user passes in. Right? So Basically what this means is it's possible for a outside program to create a movie object that has a rating that doesn't conform to the rating rules that we specified down here. And that's a problem. So what I can actually do is I can take these and I can replace them with the setters. So instead of saying this dot title is equal to title, what I can actually just say is this dot set title and inside of here, I can pass in the title that they passed in. And I can do this for all of these attributes. So I can say this.setDirector. And inside here, I can just pass director. And finally, we can just do it for a rating. So I can say this.rating. Whoops, this.setRating. And I'll just pass the rating. So now, instead of just having these be accessed or set directly, will set them using these set methods. And this is a really good way to set up your constructors, you know, using the set methods in order to do it. So now if I was to create a movie object with a rating that was different than G, P, G, P, G, 13, R, or NR, it's just going to set it equal to NR. So we're basically, you know, tightening up the class. So the outside object can only do what we want it to do. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.